My name is Mark Whitten. With my wife Eve Cantor, we farm in southwest Victoria, uh, just north of Hamilton. Uh, we have a series of farms and we trade as jigsaw farms. Uh, and we're known for uh, a range of things, uh, predominantly uh, as a grazing operation, running fine wool uh, lambs and a beef operation, but also for a large integrated forestry for saw logs, but also biodiverse uh, permanent revegetation. Um, and we're now carbon neutral by doing that as an offset program. Uh, we're very happy to be involved uh, in the, and become accredited in the Bee Friendly Farming uh, program. A and going forward, we see it as just another add-on, a very valuable add-on, which complements the other things we do. From a production point of view, the Bee Friendly Farming works very well within our system, and we think it enhances our system. And we think it'll do this in a number of ways. Um, one is it will involve our biodiversity gains, which are a really big indicator for us um, of our health, of both our farm and of the people that work here. And we think by understanding the role of pollinators uh, in bees in particular, we think we'll be able to enhance that. From a production point of view, I'm hoping that by having more pollinating creatures here, we'll have better uh, uh, plants, and uh, not just in the in the agroforestry, not just in the permanent revegetation, but also in the pasture. I mean, it's a significant thing for us and for some of the small cropping that we do. We're also very happy to. Uh, hi, um, that was just a bit of an introductory video to the Bee Friendly Farming Program. Um, I'm Fiona Chambers from the Wean Bee Foundation, and I'm really thrilled to be joining the Tokal Virtual Field Days today, um, as I did last year. So this time last year, uh, I was just introducing the Bee Friendly Farming Program and saying it was about to be coming. So I'm really thrilled to be uh, today telling you about the fact that it is here and tell you all about the program and how you can get involved. So Bee Friendly Farming uh, Program started in America in about 2012, I think it was. And so it's been going for some time now. And a couple of years ago, uh, when I was, I met with the Pollinator Partnership who owned the program in the States and negotiated with them to be able to bring the program to Australia. So Wien Bee Foundation has signed a licensing agreement with the Pollinator Partnership in America. And so we have the rights to, to run this program in Australia. So we launched the program in just in May. So it's only been going for five or six months. And we already have over 11,000 hectares of certified land confirmed. And they cover beef, almond, avocado, grazing, just mixed fruit and enterprises, vineyards, we've got a foliage nursery. So really, really mixed, diverse set of farms that have become certified. And that's across five states of Australia. Um, we expect that that will double in the next month as just with the applications we've got pending in, in the pipeline. So it's a really exciting time for the program. We appointed two technical staff just in this last month. Um, and so we're really thrilled to be growing this program uh, really at quite a fast rate. Uh, so who are the farmers? We're, here's just some of them. So you met one of them in the video at the introduction, but uh, Ian Rathjen was one of the first farms. Uh, he runs a vineyard in Colburn Abbon in Victoria. Um, Mike Hogan is in Northern New South Wales and his operation is a horticultural operation with custard apples and macadamias and a whole range of diff different tree crops. And the Bowie family in Western Australia, they've got 10 farms um, south of Perth and they um, run beef cattle, an Angus beef cattle operation. So really, really diverse set of farms and each of them are coming to the Bee Friendly Farming Program for different reasons. The Bee Friendly Farming Program is uh, managed by an Australian scientific task force. And that task force has a really diverse set of skills spanning um, integrated pest management, bee biology, agronomy, uh, pasture speciality, um, farming and ecology. <clears throat> and that diverse set of skills is really important to making sure that what we're doing with the Bee Friendly Farming Program is fit for the Australian conditions, 
rather than just picking up what, what works in America, we're really making sure that the, the criteria are fit for the Australian conditions. The two people that we've just employed are Lee Hanna and Yolanda Hanush, and we're really delighted to have them on board. Both Lee and Yolanda are just in the final stages of completing their PhDs in uh, pollination ecology. Uh, they come with a, a really sound set of skills um, and so they're able to offer those skills to uh, people who have become Bee Friendly Farming certified. We have a range of partners. Um, Flo has, uh, has come on board as founding partners and provided a $50,000 grant, which is the largest single grant that Flo had, had ever given. So we're really proud to be able to uh, be recipients of, of that grant and, and that partnership, that sponsorship funding. One Tree Planted provided, um, uh, we've partnered with to provide the tree grants that we have on offer. And we've also had the Almond Board of Australia and the National Farmers Federation come on board as well as partners. So um, looking forward to growing our partners for the program over time. The program has a number of benefits. So, you know, why would you want to be involved? Well, it's really interesting that farmers um, and gardeners, they're coming to the program for a range of different reasons. Predominantly what the program is seeking to do is to grow pollinator flora and habitat across Australia. We know that habitat loss is one of the major drivers of one of the threats to pollinators in Australia. And so making sure that we're growing the, the, the availability of flora and habitat is really important. It also encourages a number, the number and diversity of insect pollinators. So we're really um, committed to, to not just um, improving conditions for honeybees, but to make sure that we've got that diversity of other pollinators, because the science is very clear that where you've got an um, increased number and diversity of pollinators, you get much better pollination outcomes across the crops that you're growing. Um, one of the other benefits is being part of a program that allows for continuous improvement and best practice. So we're really um, through our technical um, at, uh, scientific task force, through our technical advisors, we're really providing some scientific supports to, to um, really encourage best practice on farms, whether that's with planting, what you're planting, whether that's for IPM you know, or a range of other practices. It really is about improving, the, making sure the conditions are as good as possible for pollinators on farms. Being part of the Bee Friendly Farming Certified Program uh, gives you access to tree grants. And I'll be talking a little bit more about those in a moment. And people that are certified are then able to apply the signs, use the signs. So you can't just buy a sign and put it up. You actually need to be part of the program to have access to these signs for farm or garden or partners. So what are the criteria? Um, there's, there's sort of five or six key things to be part of the program. The first one is offering floral resources to provide good nutrition on at least 3% of your land. Now, where does that 3% come from? That's actually grounded in science where it's shown that 3% um, is really the sweet spot where you do get to see a, a change and an improvement in biodiversity. So that's why the 3% is there. What we're seeing with uh, the applications that have been coming through is many of the farms are achieving well beyond, well above the 3% minimum. Um, but for farms where that's a bit of a struggle, what's important is their commitment to working towards increasing that floral resource availability to that minimum of 3%. And so we're working with landholders to achieve that. And the tree grants have certainly been helpful in assisting farmers with that transition. But having 3% um, available floral resources, but that only is not enough, you also have to make sure that that 3%, the flowering is across the growing season. So if you're in an alpine area and you've got snow on the ground for three months of the year, the growing season would be nine months. You're not required to have it for 12 months if it's too cold and the insects aren't um, and flying um, and feeding. So it is across the growing season. So we're really wanting people to think and plant strategically to ensure that it's not just about the crop pollination. In this photograph, we're looking at almonds. 
And we know that almonds, you know, have that short window of flowering. And in the shoulder periods, it's, there's, it's a bit of a desert. So there's not much there for the um, honeybees when they arrive in the, at the beginning or at the end of the almond pollination. So in this picture, there's um, a cover crop that's being grown between the, the trees to ensure that there's option and that there's some floral resources and some good protein resources for the bees when they arrive at the almonds. So that's the principle we want to see um, flowering bloom of different plants across the growing season. The third criteria is to provide clean water for the bees. And whilst this is uh, in keeping with the biosecurity code of practice, um, it, it's, it's also written into the, um, the criteria for bee friendly farming. And, and that's a bit interesting because we know that water is really important for honeybees that require the water for um, uh, um, thermal control in the hives, but uh, it's le actually less important for the native bees, but it's still a requirement of the, the bee friendly farming standard because of the importance for honeybees. The fourth criteria for bee friendly farming is the need to provide permanent habitat for nesting um, throughout the year. So, so the permanent habitat, if we're talking honeybees, of course, the habitat where bees live uh, is in hives we provide for them. But when you're talking native pollinators, um, many of our native pollinators will be nesting either in the ground or in um, twigs and brushes. And so we need to make sure that there's um, suitable, suitable habitat for nesting. And now that could be through shelter belts, could be through wildlife corridors, or just by for some bees providing bare ground and making sure that undisturbed bare ground is providing for the nesting habitat of the, the species. Now, the fifth criteria um, is around pest management. And the first thing I'd say is that the Bee Friendly Farming Program is not an organic certification program. So when it comes to the use of chemicals, we don't come in and say you can or cannot use chemical A, B or C. What the pest management approach is, though, is we do say you must have an integrated pest management um, strategy and program in place. So what we what is required is that landholders, um, first of all, they they monitor for pests and are able to identify pest species. So you know some people will um, say in their applications we actually don't have a problem with pests. So they they might be out there looking, but they don't have to have pests. But they are observing and monitoring and are able to identify that they actually don't have a pest problem. That's still okay. If people do have pests, so we do require that they're able to identify what those pests are and that they take active steps to monitor the pests and, and know what the thresholds are at which point that they need to intercept and take action to address the pest problem. Now, when you then reach that threshold and need to take uh, um, action, it doesn't mean you then just jump straight for the chemicals, but you would first of all assess and review and look at all of the other range of options that are available to you. So those first options might be through physical management or cultural controls um, through your practices. Um, or it might be using biological methods by bringing in predatory wasps or insect species that will feed on the, on the pest species. And if all of those things don't work, then chemicals may, be, may play a role as a last resort. But where chemicals are used, it's really important that the, the landholder has a strategy really clearly in place to mitigate any risks to pollinators, um, either in the short term or the, or the longer term. So that, that IPM approach is the approach that's required. And, um, so it's, it's an area that we'll be working more to help people understand their obligations. Um, as part of Australian Pollinator Week this year, we have a webinar um, being held uh, on integrated pest management for farms and gardens. So I'd really encourage you to come along and learn, learn about those practices. Essentially, we recognise in the Bee Friendly Farming Program, landholders need to um, manage their, their pests on farms. And the first step would be preventing infestations. So 
you know, managing the environment to minimise infestations of pests is the ideal. But if you do then have an infestation, which will happen from time to time, um, no matter how good your practices are, then chemicals would be the last resort. The, the final thing is paying a certification fee. And this certification fee enables us to, um, for this, this program to be self-funding. So the for Be Friendly Farming Certified, which is about managing, certifying the land, the certification fee depends on uh, your, how big your land holding is. And for the fee, what people get is access to our, our um, technical staff to be able to provide expert advice on, you know, perhaps what can be done what in terms of what to plant, when to plant it, how to plant, how much area to plant, and what can be done to, in terms of IPM. So all sorts of advice to support the landholder improve their practices for the pollinators. That's included in the annual fee. The other thing that's included is, of course, access to the tree grants, which you need to be Bee Friendly Farming certified to have access to. The Bee Friendly Farming Garden category is kept at a very low annual fee of $39. Uh, yeah, we encourage people to become involved in that if you've got a garden you want to certify. Um, the partner category ranges from the beekeeper category at $79 right up to a platinum um, partner at $55,000. And when the, the Bee Friendly Farming um, Certified allows farmers access to use the logo on their product. So if you were an apple farmer um, and you, you know, you produce your apples, you're Bee Friendly Farming certified, you're a paid up member, you're able to apply the Bee Friendly Farming logo onto the apples you sell from your Bee Friendly Farming certified land. Uh, with um, the other categories, garden, it's non-commercial, you're, you're unable to use the logo because it's not a commercial product. So that's why there's the difference in the pricing. Uh, beekeeper category, because I know there'll be a lot of people in the audience today who are beekeepers. The $79 membership allows you to apply um, this message. You, you, so if you were selling your honey at a farmer's market, for example, you're unable to use the logo on your honey, but you are able to apply the sign to say, I'm a bee-friendly farming partner and we're, we're a proud partner of the bee-friendly farming program. So all of that's um, explained in the logo use agreements. We had $100,000 worth of tree grants to give away. We've just recently reviewed um, 17 grants that came in, uh, 17 applications, and we've awarded grants across four states of Australia. And those grants amount to $43,500. So we were undersubscribed for the tree grants, but they, those grants are going towards um, establishing 65 hectares of habitat um, and so we're on, on bee friendly farming farms. So we're really, really proud that we're contributing to that increase in habitat. And, you know, thanks go to our partners, both One Tree Planted and Flow for backing these tree grants and, and helping us um, to offer them to our bee friendly farming farms. Uh, the, though that money is uh, about 50% of that money is going to almond industry um, and 15% to vineyards and 35% to grazing enterprises. So again, a really nice mix of enterprises that are benefiting from the tree grants. Um, I mentioned the we've got a couple of, of um, uh, webinars that will be running through Australian Pollinator Week. So here's the, the date just so that you uh, remember. So look, thanks for letting me share with you today um, about the Bee Friendly Farming Program. And to finish, I'd just like to um, leave you with a few words from one of our other Bee Friendly farm Farmers. I've been farming all my life, but um, when I first bought this on my uncle, I decided to put a vineyard in. It was something my great grandfather did when he first came out from uh, Europe. So I thought I'll have another go at it. So I started planting in 94, 95. We run um, 1,500 acres and we're running about 55 hectares of vineyard in amongst that. The rest of it's just mixed farming, sheep and wheat, cereal cropping. Obviously we're farming about 85% of, of our property. The rest is um, in forest or native grass. I just noticed a bit of a decline in natural beehives around here in trees, so it's been a bit of a worry. Uh, and I just figured uh, they're an important part of the insect world. We need, we need to look after them, try and encourage their
prevalence. So well, what, why do you care about bees? Why do you care about creating an environment for bees? Bees are not involved in, uh, directly in pollination in, in grapevines. They're actually a commensal organism, meaning uh, they're a good indicator. So if we have a healthy vineyard environment, if we have a healthy vineyard ecosystem, uh, and we have bees present, then we know that the environment's uh, working. Well, we, we don't use insecticides in the vineyard, so we need as many predatory insects as we can encourage. Uh, just to keep the balance right and uh, we've found in the last few years if we've got the balance right then things look after themselves pretty well. So we are interested in creating a, an ecosystem in our vineyards, uh, deliberately creating a, an ecosystem that is both beneficial to bees as well as it, as it is beneficial to the vineyard. Uh, success would be the necessity to never put an insecticide on or fungicide or just to have a completely oh, vineyard that's alive, I guess. We just want something to be completely alive, whether it's the soil or whether it's the canopy or whether it's a mid-row. It needs to be alive and vibrant. That's what I'm looking for.